Hello and welcome, my friends and viewers, to this week's episode of Legend Lore, where I draw and talk about monsters, characters, gods, and other things from D&D 5th edition, all while giving a small but quickly digestible history about them. Together we'll go over their origins within the game, how they utilize in the modern edition, and how you guys can utilize them in your own games. This week, we're going to be covering Strongheart the Paladin, a knight and founder of the heroic order of Valor's Call. Strongheart's first IRL appearance was in a 1980s D&D toy line as an action figure, also appearing in the closely tied 1984 adventure Quest for the Hearthstone, alongside other classic D&D characters such as Warduke, who we covered in a previous Legend Lore video. Most of his story and history has to do with his relationship with Warduke and their titular quest for the Hearthstone. Upon their discovery and exposure to the artifact, the innate natures of both Strongheart and Warduke were brought to the forefront. Warduke grew cruel and bloodthirsty and hungry for power, while Strongheart only grew more virtuous and honorable. Beyond that, the rest is history as there really isn't much information about Strongheart or Warduke beyond this, save for their recent appearance within the 5e adventure, Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Strongheart as a character is a seeker of justice, facing danger and evil without fear or doubt, and ensuring that good endures no matter the situation. When dealing with others, be they ally or foes, Strongheart is honorable, honest, kind, and thinks on his actions before taking them. Despite this, he will not hesitate to battle endlessly against those who flop the law, sow chaos, and engage in absolute pure evil. As such, his alignment is lawful good, meaning that he keeps two codes of honor, fairness, and justice, and he always attempts to see the good in people. He has no specific godly pursuit, however, choosing to instead embody the ideal of courage, bravery, and standing against corruption and malevolence. He considers Mercyon, Elkhorn, and all the other members of Valor's Call to be great allies and personal friends, but his greatest flaw lies in the willingness to sacrifice himself for the greater good, which means that justice can lose one of its greatest champions in a moment's notice. There is such a thing as too much selflessness, which I think is a big flaw that Strongheart has to deal with on a frequent basis. As I said before, Strongheart appears in the 5th edition adventure Wild Beyond the Witchlight, and I will be covering his involvement in that adventure, so warning for spoilers ahead, mainly for this module and his place within it. If you guys have not played the adventure and intend to, please skip to this timestamp, as this section is purely for Dungeon Masters. Over the course of Wild Beyond the Witchlight, the party will discover that alongside the main plot hook of the campaign, a pair of groups are warring against one another and have been caught in the middle of the chaos. The League of Malevolence, led by the wizard Kellick, who we covered in a previous video, battles against the heroic guild of Valor's Call, the latter having come to the land of Prismere in order to align with the powerful archfey, Zibelina. However, the events of the campaign lead Zibelina to be frozen in time by the Avengers' antagonist, the Hourglass Coven, and due to being in proximity of her while discussing an alliance, four out of the six members of Valor's Call are frozen alongside her. Strongheart is one of these victims, having been blown out of a wall by Warduke using his horn of blasting, and floating over what appears to be a large circular storm void. It is up to the party to break the curse and prevent him from falling into this void, as well as free the rest of his allies in order to do battle against both the League of Malevolence and the Hourglass Coven. It's all pretty straightforward and easy to understand, especially given the fact that Strongheart's motivation is to purely do good and see justice be done. If the party frees him, they gain a powerful ally, and may even be allowed to join the ranks of Valor's Call if they are good aligned which could lead to all manner of heroic adventures in the future beyond the campaign. Speaking of which, something that I've come to notice is that your party doesn't exactly have a plot hook or something that notifies them of the existence of Valor's Call. So something that I recommend doing when running Wild Beyond the Witchlight is making it so the party discovers Strongheart's sentient longsword, Steel, over the course of their adventures. They could either find it at the end of a dungeon or even win it as a prize by playing one of the carnival's many games. Upon being found, Steel will plead with the party to help reunite it with its master, Strongheart, as well as aiding in the battle against the League of Malevolence and the Hour glass coven. Steel could possibly even find one of the party members to be even more good and more worthy than Strongheart, choosing to become their own weapon over the course of the campaign even after the rescue of Valor's Call. A lesser man would feel heartbreak and jealousy at losing such a weapon, but Strongheart would instead feel pride at the fact that there are other heroes whose goodness even rivals his own, as it means that only more good deeds and heroism can come out of it, and a heartfelt goodbye between man and sword can definitely bring an invested party to tears. Now in terms of combat, Strongheart fights using steel, as well as using the command spell to compel foes to surrender, while focusing on capturing and imprisoning evildoers rather than killing them outright. Despite this focus on preventing death, Strongheart is capable of making three attacks with steel, and can blind a target with one of his attacks per turn without a saving throw. This marks one of the few abilities within 5th edition that does not include a saving throw to beat the effect. Additionally, Strongheart can use Steel to cast the spell Revivify once per day, and he has the following spell list for use in combat with a spell saving throw DC of 13. Additionally, Strongheart can use his reaction to protect another, meaning that when a creature Strongheart can see attacks another creature within 5 feet of him, he can impose disadvantage on the attack roll. This can only be done while Strongheart is wielding his shield. 
Overall, I personally think that Strong Heart stat block is pretty strong despite lacking any bonus actions to use, so I would personally just slap a healing word on a spell list in order to give him a full range of action economy to work with, while also allowing him to give some supplemental healing to the party that he is fighting alongside. I do also find it very interesting that Strongheart is labeled as a paladin, yet his stat block lacks any smite ability or smite spells. So if you're looking to outfit Strongheart with some more abilities, or if you run a more tactical crunchy game, I would recommend giving him abilities from the Oath of Devotion Paladin subclass. This makes him beefier and provides him with an aura that can passively benefit the players who he fights with, rather than just having him be another piece on the board. And lastly, for some magic items this evening, we will cover the Sentient Sword Steel and my own personal magic item, Strongheart's Winged Helm. Steel, as we discussed before, is a lawful good sentient sword with the following stats. It has a plus 2 bonus to all attack and damage rolls, and can only be attuned to by a good aligned creature, one of the few items in 5th edition's catalog that actually carries an alignment prerequisite. Lastly, Steel can be used to cast the spell Revivify once per day, which can definitely be clutch when your party finds themselves on a losing battle. It's a very simple but very useful item within Wild Beyond the Lichlight, and is definitely something that I would like to give to my players even outside of the module. The plus 2 bonus is a simple but potent bonus, and having a free revivify allows the players to be a little bit more risky and a little bit more free with choosing what they want to cast, especially for your clerics and paladins. And lastly, we have the Winged Helm, a steel helmet with wings carved at the sides that allows the wearer to battle against spellcast who like to take to the skies and fly just out of melee range. The helmet grants the wearer a fly speed equal to their walking speed, and once per long rest, they can use the item to cast the spell Featherfall without requiring any material components. Telekinesis is a favorite ability amongst evil mages, so this helmet can definitely help save your party from being knocked off a cliff or by splatting on the floor of the BBEG's lair. Lastly, the item can also be used to cast the spell Counterspell once per short rest, at its regular third spell level, as it is warded against malevolent spellcasters such as Scylla or Kellic. The item stat block can be found in the description below. And that's Strongheart, everybody. I want to thank all of you guys for watching. I know this video was a little bit more shorter than my traditional work, but there unfortunately wasn't a lot of information on Strongheart or the rest of his crew, which I do hope is going to be rectified as 5th edition explores its next iteration. I definitely think that the older editions have a lot to draw upon and bring into this new form, so I do hope that they continue to kind of mine the nostalgia and stick these things in other future books or adventures. If you guys liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below how you guys have used Strongheart, how you guys have encountered him in your games, and what kind of changes you guys have enacted upon him while running your games. And if you guys want to vote on the next video, please follow the link in the description. It will take you to decide which D&D god I will cover for next week. And lastly, please let me know what you guys would like to see in upcoming videos. But until then, I'll see you guys next time.